Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started because we are a little bit uh, behind here. But, uh, but yeah, it'll just drop me off into a random spot on the overworld. Um, kind of got nasty enemies here. Um, it randomizes the enemies, um, their locations, um, the open caves are what we're going to be focusing on. Um, we want to find connections to Metroid as early as possible. Um, there's some missiles for Metroid, that's a cool thing. You'll find um, stuff for Metroid and Zelda and vice versa. Um, I think the first place I'm going to route to is the Armos check over here. Um, the Armos check is going to be a guaranteed item on the overworld, so that's kind of where we want to go first. Yeah, I think the first thing you know, one, one I'm going to want to do here is just going to scour as many open caves as he can. Uh, he starts with four bombs here. Uh, he can force more bombs, but he's got to be careful. Yeah, that Zora kind of tried to do is probably find a weapon of some sort. <laughs> that Zora kind of uh, owned me right there, unfortunately. Um, the enemy damage is randomized here, which is a cool flag in this randomizer, you can actually um, randomize the damage that the enemies do as well. Um, it's a, it makes for a little bit harder combat than the typical um, Zelda 1 experience or even Zelda 1 randomizer experience. So we're going to take a little bit of an alternate path to get to that Armos now. Did you happen to check what your starting item is here in Zelda? Oh, that's a good call. Um, the starting item that we've got is the book, so it is of no use at all. <laughs> Seed validated. Exactly. Yeah, the book offers very little. Uh, in fact, nothing in terms of progression in the game. And here's level seven. What does, um, what can you do in this in this randomizer is, is keep you safe from candle fire. But that's about it. Right. Yeah. And level seven. Um, we're gonna come back for that. We're gonna check that out a little bit later. It's unlikely that we'll be able to get much done in there right now without a consistent source of offense. <clears throat> so we're just gonna mark it and come back later. So some interesting things to note about this randomizer in comparison to the other Zelda randomizer is we uh, keep the dungeon shapes and the dungeon enemies. Uh, the types are going to be the same no matter what. Um, and we know certain things like uh, the bait block is going to be in 7, but it's not necessary that it will block things with the way that the rooms might be shuffled around. Now I'm going to go ahead and buy some bombs here. Um... That'll give me some offense if I really need it, and also I'll be able to not leave this. Um, a couple of these bomb checks behind them, about to go past here. <clears throat> but I will probably save once I get through these, this little route that I'm going right now. <clears throat> We're just kind of checking all the open caves at the moment, checking to see what's out there. Um, a Metroid entrance would be nice because it'd be able to, or I'd be able to see what my starting item for Metroid is. Yeah, so in this flag set, um, each side of the game is guaranteed some sort of starting item. One item to help get the sea goat and could, could be anything uh, very useful. Like a, like a sword, or could be something not useful, like um, long beam, for example. So it's just up to the seed, so right, so this, see is what happens. Take, this is a vanilla take any here, where you would typically have a heart container and a potion. Um, so this time there's a potion, and I think that was a compass, I've already forgotten. <laughs> um, but, uh, but you'll have four of those type of caves, and they can really have most anything in the game, so those are good to find, usually. Unfortunately, that one wasn't very helpful there. 
And by the way, if you're not familiar with Zelda 1 at all, um, I'm doing a trick called screen scrolling. It is a um, frame perfect and pixel perfect trick. And here's Norfair, and we're gonna check. There's one possible check that I could get done here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and leave this. Um, so this check over here would be an upgrade spot. And unfortunately, I cannot check it right now unless I do not have the Ice Beam. I have the Morph Ball. Morph Ball was my starting item in Metroid, so that's good. But we're gonna leave that for now. Yeah, Morph Ball is one of the one of the very key items you want to get in Metroid. It opens up a lot of a lot of uh, ability to explore. You're yeah. almost deadlocked at every turn without it. Yeah, they're, they're... It also unlocks uh, screen scrolling in Metroid, so you can wrap around um, from doors. Right, yeah, yep, there are a few well. items that will really get the seed going in Metroid and in Zelda. And in Metroid, and you know what? Here, this is going to be easier. The great feature about Zelda 1, Metroid 1 also, is that when you enter Norfair or you enter a dungeon, um, it's going, when you up A, it's instead of taking you back to start, it's going to take you back to um, the previous dungeon or uh, Metroid entrance that you went to. <clears throat> so that's that's a nice feature that helps routing on the overworld quite a bit. But what I was saying, that was a debug feature that we had put in at one point when the logic wasn't fully there to allow you to get back. Like, it wasn't guaranteeing that you could be able to navigate backward. So that was a way to be able to navigate backward. Right. And uh, the great... Uh, or what I was mentioning earlier was the... Uh, the item that we're looking for to get the seed going, well, unfortunately, that was a heart container. Um, for Zelda, it's really a sword um, or a wand, but... Um, typically sword versus the uh, Metroid, the Morph Ball, and the Morph Ball Bombs. It's kind of what you're looking for there. We're checking out these any roads now, see if I can get anywhere useful out of them. That's one power bracelet check we can write off, so there's only three left. Yeah, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and save. And then... What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use a little trick that you can do with your it's it's an alternate up A that takes you back to start. It's like the original up A. Anywhere you're at, it'll take you back to the start screen on Zelda. So we're gonna check out the forest now. It's a little rough here. Um yeah, a little bit. <laughs> out of overworld checks might have to be uh, some yeah, a little bit of here, Metroid stuff. portal that takes you somewhere. For sure. <clears throat> now, logic will guarantee that you do have a free uh, weapon somewhere in the overworlds or accessible in Metroid. Yeah, and that could be um, sword, could be wand, could even be the blue candle if you're really lucky. But um... <laughs> <laughs> so we're about yeah, to see. Usually, what... it'll give you something. Yeah, well, it'll always yeah. give you something. But... We're about to see worst case scenario. We're gonna have to climb Death here. Mountain. It's just missiles, unfortunately. And so we're gonna go back up the coast here. Um, there are several open caves still that I haven't checked, including Vanilla Level One, which I kind of neglected to check when I was over there. It's just kind of a it's off the beaten path, um, and it's really annoying to get out of if you don't have offense as well. Especially depending on what kind of enemies can end up there, since the enemy randomization is shuffling all the overworld enemies. Might have a pack of Lionels waiting for you across that bridge, and at any moment they can just deign to snipe you as you're walking in that straight line. Exactly, which is awful. And we get a free raft here in level 2. <laughs> Unfortunately not the item that we're really looking for. A whopping two checks. And levers on these screens can be just as terrible. Luckily there was just one red lever on that screen. 
never know exactly how terrifying they are until you don't have a free weapon. Exactly. <laughs> Red levers especially are the worst. And while I'm over here, we might as well just go ahead and get this wrap check done. Because it was free on the overall, I believe it can technically guard my offense. And look at that. Free sword at the raft spot. <laughs> Alright! That puts us in business now. So, now we can explore dungeons, we can go ahead and start bombing stuff because we can get bombs. Um, yeah, good. It'll put your first offense weapon. Zelda side of the sea. Somewhere. Where you don't have to Meanwhile, actually fight to get to it. And there, there's a good hint. We got can't take a while to seven Cry Force pieces. Um, that is the highest roll. The, the flag was set anywhere from five to seven Cry Force pieces <laughs> to hit a level nine, and it rolled high this time. <clears throat> so we're going to continue checking the overworld here. Might be worth explaining that in this game, um, rather than defeating either Kraid or Ridley, they have totems that represent the flags for defeating Kraid or Ridley, and those will be kind of like picking up Triforce pieces. You might need one or both to open up Torian. Correct. There's the wave beam. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. I don't have the money for it right now, but the wave beam is pretty useful for Metroid, especially for people who are not good at Metroid like myself. <laughs> I am, uh, I came from the Zelda 1 side of things, um, and there's Screw Attack, there's another thing that I want to buy, but luckily the shops don't have anything that's necessarily required. Well, honestly, we'll probably prioritize Screw Attack of, it, of anything, and here's a pretty good entrance to Metroid. I'm gonna go ahead and check a few things here. It's worth uh, noting that the flag that we have specify that only two pieces of equipment can be in shops, and we've got both of them accounted for. So no more need to check shops or hoard rupees because no more equipment pieces are possible. And the damage in North Air. Or sorry, Brinstar rolled up here, so I gotta be super careful, and there was an enemy right above me. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna try that again and hopefully not die this time. Rios in the vertical chambers can be pretty pretty trolly. Yeah. Yeah, especially when Brinstar rolls to max or the highest enemy damage. That's 19. That's uh, right up there with uh, the default Ridley's hideout, which is the highest outside of Torian. Or excuse me, yeah, it's, uh, this is the second highest. This is Kraid's damage, I want to say. And unfortunately, we You're cannot right. see what's in there. The bridge is going to actually be vanilla here. And that enemy was waiting for me as I came through. That's okay, though, because we're going to go up and check the top area here. This is a really good entrance. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is a this is a pretty rough Star here. Okay, you know what? I'm nice. gonna go back to Zelda. We're gonna leave that for later. <laughs> the uh, the high damage of, on top of where the enemies were kind of wanting to spawn there just makes that kind of uh, come back later type of thing when you have a little bit more in the way of resources. 
I wouldn't be too surprised if Brinstar ends up being one of the harder segments of Metroid in this. Yeah, very true. I agree. Brinstar can be pretty tough. Some of those, some of those kind of off the beaten path areas of it. Um, if you die deep into it, it takes up a bunch of time. We do now have the resources to check a lot more of Zelda, and that's good to see there. This missile pack that's in the magical sword uh, spot, that means we're not going to have the farm hearts just to get the magical sword item, because it's not needed. And this is a rough screen, but I'm going to update after this, so we want to go ahead and do this waterfall first. Unfortunately, it's just a useless headshot. Okay. Vanilla. So those hint shops, uh, it, we did have a flag to randomize the paths in the Lost Woods and Lost Hills, uh, though both of those are able to be skipped with screen wraps anyway. So, um, unless the world is mirrored, which it is not in this seed. Alright, so we're gonna save, and we're gonna use our bombs down here. We're gonna bomb the coast, see if anything useful is down here. If not, we just get our bombs right back. There's a key, I guess I'll keep that. Depending on what this other check is down here. Let's try and get some bombs, actually. Bomb droppers are all the same. There's some bombs. And what do we got? Just a potion. So the potions stack in this randomizer more than just the blue and the red. Um, so that's a nice feature as well. <clears throat> you can get up to, I think, four stacked potions, I want to say. That's, I don't think we have a flag for that, so I think it's always going to be four. Got a Pulse voice tending the medicine shop today. A lot of these checks are kind of coming up empty for me. Um, you know, I think I'm gonna go back to level seven and see if I can't get something done in there. Um, possible four items out of level seven when you factor in the um, the old man item that's typically a bomb upgrade. But that's a question, Metal. Do, do the upgrade purchases count as shops? Oh, they count as upgrades. That's right. Quick transport staircase here in level 7, that's good to find, and that takes me up really close to where I want to be. Um, all of the uh, item and boss locations are up here, kind of in the top middle, in the E column, and the, and the L column. If I could block clip there. Got missiles first, not what we're looking for, we'll take it. Um, it'll help when we're trying to fight bosses. Let's see what else we got here. One of the neat things is you can sneak into the Triforce rooms now. You don't necessarily have to defeat the bosses if the doorway is open, but you can still always kill Aquamentus. It's the same as level 1, so it's one of the easier fights to have later in the game for some reason. There we go. There's a candle. That's gonna help quite a bit, and we're going to go ahead and be out of level 7. That's all the checks except for the old man check, the bomb upgrade spot, which I don't have the money for anyway, but that candle is a big help as far as getting 
some overworld exploration going here. Uh, the dungeons have not been coming too fast here, so hopefully that kind of opens some things up for me. It's entirely possible that the only way to get to a certain dungeon might be through another dungeon or in Metroid. True. True, so that's another thing that we might have to go back to level 7 for. You always kind of hope that's not the case with level 7 because of how massive it is, how many rooms you would have to check, especially with how quick that level 7 was. <clears throat> so, we're going to go ahead and... S Oops, that was not what I meant to do. Well, um... We're going back to level 7 real quick. I got a double input on my select there. <laughs> At least I know exactly where to go. <clears throat> so I got a double input put on my select. It made me retry. Um, that's unfortunate, but <laughs> it's not going to cost me too much time here. Um, in fact, I'm going to get some of my bombs back, so it's a glass half full way of looking at things. That was intentional, and just saving a bomb here and there. <laughs> exactly. That's right. RNG manipulation. And the good news as well is it did not um, take me very long to get to what I needed to get to in level 7 either. Just a quick staircase away and we'll be back on track here. I am going to go ahead and pick up these missiles again, because they can be very useful for fighting um, Kraid and Ridley, just in case. But, uh, but we've already done the exploration in the Lost Woods, so we won't have to redo that. <clears throat> oh, and you notice... Knowledge is power. <laughs> And you notice Aquaminus is shooting a lot of beams right now. That's because uh, he's on the harder boss difficulty. You can set the bosses to be higher difficulty, and they will be more dangerous, as you see there. Um, I did not play him very well, but I'm just be able to survive. We're going to press select one time here. Make sure we get that, and then we can go ahead and up A back to start. Also saw that Aquamentus was uh, able to track your position. Normally in vanilla, it's a static pattern that he fires. Right. So, yeah, plenty of improvements to make things a little bit more spicy. There's some subtle, subtle adjustments here. And just gotta give it us some subtle spice. Yeah. A little bit of cayenne <laughs> here and there. Wait, wait till you see Ridley and Kraid. If you think, uh, if you think Aquaminus was scary there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait. Yeah, if you set bosses to level 3, Aquamantis will practically spam the room with fireballs. It's almost like a bullet hell situation. Goma definitely yeah. is a hose. Oof. Yeah, they're all, they can all get pretty difficult for sure. Gliok is another one. But Gliok's always terrible. <laughs> okay, so nothing really useful over there. I'm saving often, by the way, just because now I'm scared that I'm going to mess up a select input. <laughs> <clears throat> got a fun little hint there. Normally, the tenth enemy has the bomb. This one we've got seven, so force bomb drops if you're making your counts. It's gonna be a little more frequent. True. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a shot here. We're gonna we're gonna at least see if I can do a couple checks. And there's no platform there, so you know what? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to that. Especially with that amount of health, um, I could just see that being really nasty right now. Um, I want to see if I can get just a little bit more in the way of resources before I go digging into Ridley's hideout. I can explore a lot more of Zelda, and I'm a lot better equipped to deal with Zelda, both by my own, <laughs> own skill set and by what the game has given me. 
Plenty of heart containers, no energy tanks so far. Sometimes finding the E-tanks can be uh, a bit of a challenge. Uh, they basically can show up. It depends on the flag set, but um, basically anywhere. So they could be a minor minor floor drop in a dungeon or something like that. So sometimes they're hard to find. And here's level 5. That's a good find. Hopefully I can get through it and I'm not stuck. There's some missiles on the floor. That's always good to find. And there's more stuff I want to spend money on. <laughs> Unfortunately, oh, rough. I have zero of that money right now. We're going to use these Dodongos to get some free bombs here. So, one of two things is possible. Either there is another entrance to this level 5, or that's going to take me right next door. <laughs> Alright, pretty easy room With here. Having the dungeon entrances be randomized, it's entirely possible that a dungeon won't be contiguous. You'll have to go find a different entrance to explore the entire dungeon. And level 5's little bottleneck makes it a prime suspect for that kind of shenanigans. Yeah, 5's a big one for that, 4's a big one for that. Speaking of 4, there's the Triforce for 4. Is that our first triangle, too? Yeah, first Triforce. And... We should be able... Yeah, we're definitely going to be able to check at least one more thing in here. The Triforce item is... A letter. I guess I'll pick that up, but I don't see myself buying a potion. Um, so we, we can't check what's off the boss right now because you need the recorder to beat the boss. But we got some good information in there. We know we've got to go back and get the ladder for sure out of there. A nice little change we have is potion shops will have a third item now, and uh, it could there are up to two upgrades that could be in there, so you might be able to find an E-tank. Truth. That is, that is true, but unfortunately, what I really need right now is money. Here's crates. There's This is actually a good one to find. Um, a lot of the items are in central locations. I'm going to go down and find an enemy and die here. Get some of my health back. And then I'm going to check a few things here. I'm not going to do Crates, the whole... not generous with the, the damage either. Or maybe a little too generous. <laughs> and that is just a letter, but there is an entrance over here. I might as well go check the, what this entrance is. Um, just as there are randomized dungeon entrances, there are randomized entrances in Zebus. And that was not good. So we're just going to decline this real quick. I think now might be a good time for a donation, you think? Real quick, You're audible. Before you do donations, I'm gonna say one thing. That was that was bad but good. It was another entrance to level seven, which means that entrance itself is pretty useless. But it means we don't have to worry about having to dig level seven for another entrance somewhere randomly. So that's good. But anyway, just wanted to point that out there. <laughs> Good for a donation, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Welcome in. All right, guys. We had some changes with the host setup, but we're all fixed now. I Blaster Mac, and I will be the host for the next couple of runs. Red Candle? Not as exciting as if you don't have a sword, but... Right. Red Candle is very good to see if you don't have consistent offense yet. Oh, I'm gonna die. Maybe not. It's like the, yeah, the damage down here rolled pretty high. Yeah, the two areas... Oh, that's not 12. 12 damage is actually not bad okay. for Kraid. 
That's a good point. Good point. The two areas um, that I've been in have not been super easy damage-wise, and there is another entrance to Brinstar. I'm gonna use that to just check this item real quick. I'm gonna die on purpose, get some of my health back, but that's actually a pretty good connection there. Um, it allows me to check this item real, really quickly down here. It's kind of out of the way otherwise. Don't really have to come back this way for anything after that. Yeah, a lot of times, uh, also. especially on the Metroid side of this, you might take an, uh, a, purpose, a purposeful death. Because unlike Vanilla Metroid, where you only get 30 energy, you'll always get back. In this, you'll get 50% of your max energy whenever you uh, die and, and restart on the Metroid side, which is a nice quality of life improvement for anyone that's played Metroid. Yeah, it's definitely helpful. So that was just a heart container, unfortunately. I would have much preferred an E-Tank there. Um, but we can still check a few things down here in Crave before I have to get out. Fortunately, these enemies are really, really trolling me with where they are being located. I haven't even found too much uh, Metroid progression. Yeah, we've only found... We, we've only started with the Morph Ball, that's the only thing we've really gotten so far. We do have the locations for Wave Beam and Screw Attack down, but the, those aren't really progression items. True. Yeah. Probably the most important ones you'll find in Metroid are going to be the Bombs and obviously Ice Beam. Gonna take another death here, and we are going to go back to the beginning. And that was not supposed to happen. One of the neat things about the room shuffle in Metroid is that it can totally change the logic because it can put some different obstacles in the way uh, through your navigation here. It was entirely possible that both the top and bottom would be morph ball bomb blocked, but in this case the room shuffle has them nice and open. And that was my fault. Okay, so we're gonna try that one more time here. This is kind of a rough Metroid. It doesn't help that I keep Screwing it up there. Let's just go ahead and take the easy way there. <clears throat> Alright. I thought I had time there. Okay. Should be good now. Hopefully. Have you spied any other uh, connections to Crade here on the map? Um, we've already checked two connections into Crade. Um, both of them have kind of been one offs or bus. So I'm gonna go back up to the elevator here, get a get a save that's a little bit closer. Um, that's kind of a strat. The central central exits, you'll up A back to them and it's, it's a lot better. And we got a big secret, I think, a mid or a big secret out of, out of here previously. Um, so that's good. That helps with the money. Ladder is first priority, screw attack's probably second. Unfortunately, we can't get anywhere there. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and be done. We're gonna go ahead and be done with crates for now. Um, it's at a really easy location to get back to. We made some checks. <clears throat> We'll get back to that. I'd really like to find some more dungeons in Zelda, though. That's what I'm really hoping for. And hoping it's not four, since uh, that can be ladder blocked pretty easily. Although we do have a uh, ladder. Um, at least we know where it is. Shouldn't be too hard to get that. True. Yeah, and it was unfortunately just a mid-secret that I found in there, but it's better than nothing. We're, uh... We're on our way to ladder money, at least. If nothing else, I could just kill enemies for it. It is seven kills for the force count, as we saw earlier. Okay, 
can save scum for money making game if you're really desperate to. True. And this is not a great entrance to Norfair. We're gonna come back to that if we need to. Um, Less time in Norfair, the better. <laughs> yeah, Norfair is very large, very spread out, um, and you, a lot of times you need at least more ball bombs, sometimes ice beam to really get anywhere. Um, there's a good find, that's level 9, that will be useful later, unfortunately not super useful at the moment though. Nice blood red level 9. So, question chat, why are the letters being ignored? And it's actually not letters, it is um, dungeon maps, as Metal just pointed out as well. And there's level four. We're gonna go ahead and do what's called a pirouette here. Open that key door for free. It is a glitch in the game's code that uh, forces key doors or bomb walls open if you exit and re-enter a dungeon. Um, with specific, um, with specific door, uh, setups being present, but we are actually ladder blocked in this dungeon, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, that's, that's the worst. <laughs> that will happen. Um, we need some money, for sure. So we're gonna check out more of Death Mountain here. And then we're actually gonna. I should have saved actually. It's quite a hail and hearty link here. Yeah, we got lots of hearts. Um, it'd be great if we could get some E tanks. Killing these guys for possible bombs, or in that, for that matter, money is also nice at the moment. And we're not coming back for that heart there. Let's go ahead and save. It's going to take us back to level four. Money's always good, and you never know what's going to show up in these shops. True. I don't think any of the level 7 enemies outside of Wallmasters are in the rupee drop group, though, which is unfortunate. Yeah, there is a room that I know of that had Wallmasters, but it'd be unfortunate to have to go back there just to... just for that. I do want some bombs, however. Bombs are... Bombs would be great here. nothing else we can just save to get the bombs back, or uh, retry to get the bombs back. There we go. And level six, uh, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> oh joy. Level six <laughs> is one of the more fun levels to do, especially with a wood sword, or even no sword for that matter. Um, Randomize the enemy HP and damage too. You never know if uh, any of these are going to be able to stand up to a bomb blast suddenly. Yeah, and unfortunately those uh, those ribs not cooperating there. <laughs> Do they ever? The level six is the bane of any Zelda player's existence. Just killing stuff to try and get room drops for money right now. <clears throat> Hopefully the enemy sets in the rooms that actually matter aren't too bad here. <clears throat> Sometimes it's good to clear these rooms out if you have the time just to find uh, things like E-tanks or heart containers if you have me low on heart containers. Bombs is always nice in here too. I will take that. Unfortunately, not going to be able to get that key right now. Need a ladder for that. Those explosive coupons spend pretty well. Just beat that blue wiz robe in that foot race. Yeah, 
this room is unfortunately uh, Anonymizer, not fun. in this case, will shuffle which rooms they appear in, but won't shuffle their types through enemy, uh, through dungeon types. So we're always going to see light likes and whiz robes in level 6. We're always going to see Pole's voice and Gibdos in level 5, etc. And that is unfortunate. I think I'm going to have to clear that room. Yeah, it's a single push block. I think that's uh, going to be your transport staircase in it. Yeah, actually. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Not that it's really gonna matter if I get hit by a blue whiz robe. Yikes, that was a bad vibe. Alright. We are gonna come back for that entrance though. Hopefully I don't die in the process. I do have a potion. I should probably get that potion out and ready, <laughs> to be honest. And I think the spike traps count as an enemy, so that room is going to be depleted uh, until you leave the dungeon. Some nice, squishy enemies here for once. Oh man, yeah. Wood sword, vulnerable, uh, gels. And what do we have? Oh, we have no enemies in this room. That's good news. We have a Triforce that's gonna refill our health too. Look at this level 6 being all nice. You know, the it's a level six bed and breakfast motto. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, we're not going to be able to kill the boss, but we can definitely go ahead and check the Triforce room as long as it's not blocked by the boss. Just trying to get some bombs right now. There we go. Oh, well, we cannot t uh, check the Triforce room. Scratch that. I forgot we are ladder blocked. So, we're out of here pretty quick, although we will check this other entrance. And that's one of the rough things about seeing the ladder for sale, um, is that the logic's gonna assume you can get that, but you might have to work yep. for it. Um, out of the frying pan and into the uh, fryer, we got level 8 here. Date with the Gliok in level 8, forehead of Gliok with Wood Sword. A lot of people don't like doing this. I am a fan though. Always a pleasure to see you Wood Sword a forehead of Gliok. Yeah, I run uh, I run Zelda 1 um, low percent and second plus low percent. Um, so this is. I've kind of gotten used to uh, this fight. I'm taking it a little bit less safe than I typically would in a run of that, but I got a lot more hearts and if I die, I just go right back to where I was. And there's the level six Triforce, so unfortunately, not really stuff that we're for, but we got two more items to check out of here. A little surprised about that, um, Gliok not shooting more than one bullet at a time, um, and thought that that was, uh, one of the increases in AI that it could do. The, uh, yeah, I think that... With the multi-headed Gliox, that? there's too many... All the sprite slots are being taken up, so... Gotcha, so that makes the, the two-headed and three-headed a little harder than the four-headed yeah, in some cases. Um, yeah, it depends. Yeah, so, there's only so many uh, slots for sprites and such, and really acts. the four-head really act takes just almost all of them, so... In doing that, Gliok, um, like the, the logic would not expect you to do it on wood sword. Usually it would, it would expect you to have like at least white sword and probably a ring. I think that was actually money in there. No, no. Oh no, that was uh, that was missiles. I've just been kind of checking the, especially the easy rooms, for possible money, possible e tanks. 
And there's an E-Tank. That's gonna help big time in Metroid. Excuse me. But, uh... Yeah, we're gonna go back in here real quick. Um, check this last item. Which is gonna be down in the bottom of the dungeon. Might be transport staircase blocked as well. Actually, I'm almost guaranteeing you're gonna need to find that transport staircase. Well, we actually just took the transport staircase. Um, oh, gotcha. To get up to the top. Unfortunately, though, it looks like we probably need a ladder. Although it's not necessarily true. I'm gonna just check to make sure I can't get through there another way. You know, one of the things you gotta keep in mind about this is that. Um, Certain parts of the dungeon might be locked off. You might have an alternate entrance that you can access from on some other dungeon or some part of Metroid to get to an area of the dungeon right. you couldn't get any other way. We're doing this. It's kind of exciting to see. Not too often do we have a essentially a blue yeah. lagoon here. Yeah, another uh, low percent staple. I went ahead and took that potion. That's a good thing I did. health randomized too um it could even be even more work than usual to get these blue dark nuts yeah that's why i used a bomb there i don't want to use all my bombs i want to save at least one or two and these dark nuts are looking pretty pretty healthy a little healthier than normal yeah we're gonna go ahead and use another potion here get some beam back beams back and try and hold on to them a little bit longer than i did last time. Actually, they weren't too bad. I think that uh, I was just hitting the wrong ones at the wrong times. Oh, yeah. And... <laughs> Unfortunately, kind of like dominoes at the yeah. end. Unfortunately, yeah, so <laughs> we got a dead end there. Um, so we are ladder blocked in that dungeon, unfortunately. Um, we got to go back to level four. But first, I want to finish out Death Mountain here, because I'm right here. It looks like the bubbles are actually taking away my B item right now. Oh man, yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, bubbles can be set to take different buttons away. Or both. Yeah, question chat, how much was the ladder? It was 50 rupees, so I'm gonna go back and get that right now. Um, that's gonna unlock the last item in level 6. It's gonna unlock the last item, well, one of the items in level 6, not the last item, but the last item in level 8 is what I meant to say. Unfortunately... It just occurred to me that because you have the book, you can't damage boost off of your own fire, you can't uh, opt for the fire for a weaker hit. <laughs> that is true. To get those iframes, yeah. which I am used to just kind of doing without thinking about. Luckily, I don't think it's coming to play yet. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to go ahead and save here. And the good news is we've got bomb-dropping enemies right here on the screen with level 6. If you're heading back to uh, 7 for the ladder, you think uh, might be a good time for some donations? Nobody is the nation's 
Okay, so we're, uh, bef yeah, before I go back to level 4 to get the lap, or sorry, level uh, 7, or not, not even 7, uh, level 5 to get the ladder, um, we are going to just finish out Death Mountain here really quickly. And I know that that screen to my left there, which is usually a check, is just a... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, and that's the white sword item, by the way. We know it's just a take any cave, or take any road, because I've already seen that, so. Now we have, one, two, three, four Triforces. We got four of the seven that we need. <clears throat> We're getting there on Triforces. We really just need stuff, but we really need stuff for Metroid. Okay, we're going to go ahead and go back to start here and head over to level 5. We're going to pick up the ladder. We're going to do level 4. We're going to go back to level 6. We're going to go back to level 8. It, it's unfortunate the level 8 is buried so deep in level 6. If that weren't the case... Oh, that's not... I've been mismarked. Oops, didn't mean to go back in there. But we have a ton of money now. And I'm definitely going to go buy that screw attack before I go back to Metroid. As well. <clears throat> screw attack is super so helpful for Metroid. So Chad, I'd like to play a little game, uh, since we need seven Triforce pieces, uh, I wanted to wonder which of the last, or which piece is going to be omitted from our required Triforce, one through eight, and we've already accounted for two, three, four, and six. Get your guesses in, which one is uh, going to be the lucky piece that we do not need to find. I'm calling Triforce 5. It always sends, uh, t tends to be a late Triforce. <laughs> the board was over here. And I just forget exactly where level 4 was. I did not mark it, unfortunately. My bet's on uh, Triforce piece number 1. You know, I will. I will donate uh, the number that is the last Triforce piece. <laughs> okay, having some trouble relocating level four right now. Um, so we are actually. There's uh, been some questions in chat about how this randomizer oh. works. Um, so. Yes, the way this one works, this combo randomizer works, is we have doors or portals set up in both games. Um, and they're new, they're new doors, new portals. Except for in the overworld, we replaced some of the uh, some of the door repair shops, uh, caves basically with portals. But yeah, you, so basically you can take any any cave, depends on the settings, but you can take any cave entrance, and it could take you to a dungeon, it could take you to any anywhere in Metroid into an elevator entrance or through new doors we added so there really are no fixed portals unlike um, I think the uh, Super Metroid Link of the Past randomizer has fixed portals unless they've updated that but uh, this so basically every time you play this a, a new seat you'll have to find the portals again and all of a sudden we are not hurting for money we found an entrance to level four or level one inside of level 4 there, um, and then level 1 immediately had money, and more money. Ok, 
Okay, so we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna waste some keys here real quick. Um, one difference from Zelda One randomizer and Zelda One Metroid One randomizer is the fact that in Zelda One Metroid One, the levels one, two, and three are not guaranteed to have every connected bomb wall. Um, or every connected wall be a bomb wall. Um, in other words, like in, in Zelda 1 Randomizer, every single door that connects to another room in a dungeon on the vanilla map in, uh, in just this regular Z1R, um, it's, if it's not an open door or a key door, it's going to be a bomb wall. I did a terrible job of explaining that, but uh, as you saw, there were connected rooms that did not bomb there. Also, we just found an arrow upgrade. That is one of the required finds for Zelda. It's not functional without a bow yet, but it is absolutely required to beat the game. Well, maybe we'll get a vanilla bow here, and then I won't even have to backtrack to level 6, or when I go recheck level 6 and level 8 here. I'm not sure if it's been covered yet, but uh, some of the items you'll see will have a little plus sign next to them. Uh, that means it's an upgrade, so you might see and you just saw him pick up an arrow with a little plus next to it. That means that you, you'll get whatever next level arrow that you don't have. So if you already had wooden arrow and you pick that up, you'll get silvers. So those aren't necessarily separate items. You have to get both of them in order to get silvers in this uh, flag set. And in the meantime, I found the next best thing. I didn't find the bow, but I found Morphal Bombs, which that's going to completely open me up for progression in Metroid. Yeah, bombs are an amazing find. I'm going to show off a ladder clip here in that tea room. You're not supposed to be able to get across that, but the same idea as screen scrolling. We can pass Must right be done unbuffered that. as well. Normally, you'd be able to buffer that input by uh, attacking with your sword, but you can't do that on the ladders. Various suit. Um, Alright, well, this is really turning out well for the go back to Metroid argument. Um, I think oh, wow. that I'm going to do that before I even go back to level 6 or level 8, to be honest. Are you gonna pick up the screw attack and wave beam with your uh, your loaded wallet here? <laughs> yeah, and the good thing is both shops for those are right next to the entrance to Brinstar, so that's gonna help greatly. The red candle is great against buyers, though. That's the one thing that it really does help to have um, if you can't kill buyers in one hit. <clears throat> They'll never drop anything, but it certainly will lock them down and get rid of the keys that they spawned. Super helpful. I even missed the axe being a little shy. Yeah, okay, so I guess the axe uh, bullet hovis has been toned down, huh? <laughs> and there's the ice beam off of Gleok. So, and level 7 Triforce. So if you guessed level 7. Um, today was not your day for the minigame. And I saw you picked up one earlier, so I already, I already lost my bet. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get out of this level 4, and we're going to go back to Metroid, especially with that Ice Beam now. Um, all of a sudden, we're not missing all that much progression. We need a, a couple Triforces, we need a bow, we need an arrow upgrade, and then we need... Um, we need uh, a totem or two. But uh, the seed has really picked up fast. Of course, it would be nice to have um, not, not have to stab Ganon 20 plus times. <laughs> that is true. It would be, especially if I don't find a ring. Um, 
that could present a problem. So, hopefully I find something to upgrade my offense or defense before I go fight Ganon. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think uh, we removed the ability to stun lock Ganon, or at least did something to mitigate that. Well, it's it's the timer for his respawn is random now and it uh, makes it almost impossible to keep a stun lock. You can get him a few times, but to get it and keep it, it's almost impossible. Yeah, in theory you could, if you figured out the timing, you could stun lock him, but since it's randomized, it's like, like Antler said, it's, it's next to impossible. So. And, and the higher the Ganon level is, the higher the difficulty level is, the more randomized that is. go up here first. We're going to make this big loop while we've got this good exit saved as our spawn point. And there should be really nothing holding us back up here now. Uh, I wanted to question one of your calls earlier when you said that it was a vanilla bridge. Um, I'm not sure if you could be able to tell that from the map, because I think uh, Torian warps you to that place, uh, but the map doesn't change. That. Well, so I, I, it wasn't from looking at the map. It, I believe, I, I'm pretty sure in this flag set, I, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I have the bridge set to vanilla. Oops. Gotcha. Okay. Shit, I'm having a hard time finding the tab that that, that flag is on. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember where it is either, to be honest. And the hydro boots. In... Yep, okay, I found it. Shuffle Torian Bridge is set to no. Yep, so we know where nine is, we know where the bridge are, or where the bridge is. Um, it's really just a matter of kind of cleaning up and finding these last few items. Um, we are a little bit scattered in our checks, which is unfortunate. Um, it was just a product of kind of finding things in an order that wasn't super uh, conducive. But nothing's really going to be slowing us down at this point, so we're definitely on the home stretch. Someone in chat asking. Um... Our Mother Brain and Ganon both final bosses in this combo, and that is true. Both of them have to be defeated yes, to that. bring an end to the, the seed. And both of them will have harder logic as well. Um, stay tuned if you haven't seen it before, because Mother Brain and Ganon are both a treat to, to see in this randomizer with the harder boss logic. There's a thing that could be required. Um, definitely can be very helpful for rounding the overworld and getting to dungeons. Um, because we have Triforces out of dungeons that we haven't completed yet, we can sometimes recorder to the spot where the dungeons are for the Triforces that we have, even if we haven't found those dungeons yet. I just realized your prediction that uh, Triforce piece number five would be the last one. You're at a 50-50 shot for that right now, aren't you? Uh, I believe uh, it's so. Between eight and five. Yeah, I believe so. We'll see. Triforce has really picked up there. Found like three of them in a row. We got a few more checks to make here in Brinstar or in the upper section of Grand Star, then we can go down to the lower uh, portion of it. There's a couple checks down there, and there is also a connector to check down in the bottom as well. Typically it goes to Kraid's Lair. There's a ring, so that we'll definitely pick that up. Um, Typically I don't like finding rings because, again, of, like my favorite category to run in this game is low percent. Um, but uh, for Ganon, we'll definitely pick that up. 
make him a little bit easier on uh, with that wood sword. Alright, here's the last check down here and then we can up A. This is where the ice beam typically is in Vanilla Metroid. Uh, did you check the other shaft that's usually empty in vanilla? The other shaft? Um, the hallway to the left. Yeah, you see in there? There you go. Oh, as far as, like, for, di for another exit? Oh, right, that's uh, optional. That's right. You got it, you're good. <laughs> minor, minor item slot. Yep. It's not gonna have anything important. Yeah, nothing important. It could have an E-Tank, but it's not worth the time it takes to get down there to, to check it. And that enemy is spawning in a really unfortunate location. I'm gonna try and not take a hit this time. All right. Health is very low here. I'm gonna try and not take a death. Don't need that, so that's good. That's always an annoying item to get, especially if you don't have the high jump boots. We do have the high jump boots, but it's still not super fun to freeze enemies to try and get up there. So that is where we want to be, but we want to check the start item real quick first. <clears throat> Oh, I was kind of a fan how that start starting room tile sets the music for the entire section. I was wrong. Oh, bad luck. Yep. <laughs> nice meme. Puts it right at the vanilla start item for Metroid. I could have had that a lot earlier, but it's a good thing I didn't come down here earlier just because that wouldn't have really netted me any progression at the time. Alright, let's see where this one goes. And it's just a, an overworld spot here, so that's not bad. Um, we're going to go back over to... Breed's Lair. Finish that out. There's still a few checks in there that I haven't made. sent in my triangle donation and I encourage other people to donate toward the Zelda swordless tasks um, that incentive has not quite been met yet so hoping to see that come to fruition maybe get an eight dollar train going for that Triforce piece that was our last remaining one oh, that would be awesome all right screw attack is going to make this area much less difficult. And we're gonna go ahead and leave that big shield right where it is. Because I hate the big shield. <laughs> it makes screen scrolling <laughs> way more difficult. Um, so it usually just ends up costing me time. Um, big shield is very good if you're still learning combat in Zelda 1 or you, you're just not quite comfortable with it yet. Um, it, can, it can really help. I certainly never pass it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sam. I've learned to, to deal with the, the setback that it has for lining up those clips. And there. Oh, hey, and that's nice, too. Yeah, there's a... Uh, I, I don't think I needed that when I was here first. Well, I know I didn't, because I got the candle after the sword, but, uh, but it is definitely nice to find at this point. All right. I have a question for you. If you found the long beam, would you take it? Yes, because it can really help with um, that thing that is going to be a surprise in Mother Brain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Hmm. What could it be? <laughs> All right, so that was not a good start. Somehow I was able to dodge the damage there. We're just gonna go ahead and wait all on grade here. The wavy ice beam is a uh, fantastic. Uh, this is something that you don't normally get in vanilla Metroid, but it's very good for killing Kraid here, even though he is definitely motoring here as he <laughs> bounces back and forth. Yeah, so normally he does not move that fast in vanilla, obviously. Um, that is all the improved Z1M1 boss logic, and there is another good find. Those are my silver arrows. We are a bow away from go mode in Zelda. Very nice. Have we covered um, the difference, the, the totems in this yet? I'm not sure if we talked about that yet. We did. Yeah, oh, we did. early okay. on. Uh, we might have some new viewers as the, as the morning here wears on and we get some uh, people back in the chat from other nightly sojourns. Okay. Um, might be worth explaining. Yeah. So for those of, the, those of you who weren't here earlier, uh, normally Metroid, to uh, get into Tutorial, all you gotta do is, is defeat both of the bosses to raise the statues. Uh, in this, we've... Uh, created that requirement, uh, we've turned them into items, so you'll need to find two items that are called totems. Uh, you have a totem for Kraid and a totem for Ridley. And much like the Triforces in, in the Zelda side, they gate the entrance to the final area, so you have to find those two totems uh, in order to get into Torian in this randomizer. It still is a good idea to defeat the bosses, to A, get the missiles that they give you, and also see what's behind them, because the doors are locked until you defeat them. And unfortunately, the item that was down here was just a key. So, I want to go back to Ridley's hideout now, I think. That's going to be the next best area to check. Unfortunately, I did not. Looks like I forgot to mark Ridley's hideout. I think I know where it is there. Uh, I'm not going to do a screen scroll there. <laughs> yep, I was correct. Okay. We've got a relatively untouched uh, Ridley's hideout in here, right? Yeah, completely untouched. Um, I didn't do a single check here, so this could, I mean, this could net me go mode. At the very least, you're probably walking out of here with uh, another 75 missiles in your belt. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's, uh, that's gonna be a big boon. We're not gonna leave here without... Killing Ridley for sure. And there's the long beam, so you have, um, there's the answer to your question. I am gonna go ahead and pick that up. <laughs> <laughs> it can also be helpful against Ridley, though. Taking a death to refill my health a little bit. <clears throat> are you planning on doing a lava shark, or are you just gonna stand and deliver? What's that? Are you planning on doing the lava shark uh, technique on Ridley, uh, or? No. No, it can, it can it, like, it can definitely help if you're trying to do that strat, but, um, we're gonna play him more straight up. Um, as far as that goes, I will try and freeze the, uh, the little shots that he does, and Longbeam can really help with that. If, you, if you're not familiar with the Z1M1 Ridley, um, he's usually in vanilla Metroid pretty easy. Not even really much of a concern, but in this one, he can put up a little bit of trouble. You'll see exactly how when we get down there. One of the things you might notice if you are a Metroid player or familiar with Metroid at all is um, <clears throat> vanilla Metroid, the enemies kind of settle into one of two patterns, uh, but in this randomizer we've kind of fixed the RNG, so you'll see the enemies swoop down in low, medium, or high arcs, uh, 
uh, Ridley's fireball pattern will be randomized. Basically, it, it recovers the uh, the RNG that was present in the, in the Japanese Famicom version, which is kind of a surprise to some people who are familiar with Metroid and haven't played this before. But we, fig uh, we felt that it gives you a, a much better experience overall. Much more, kinda, uh, much more true to what was probably intended. Yeah. Even. Saw the the banana through the wall there. Yeah, that means we don't have to go down that hallway, which is it's kind of long to be honest. So it's always nice when you don't have to go down that way. Trying to preserve some health here, not doing a very good job of it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're so close to four fours in that donation total. Someone needs right, to donate exactly $9. $9. Oh, so I'm gonna wait. Hey, here, here's Ridley getting real aggressive right up in the grill. Yeah, we're, we're gonna wait for that, uh... That little... Oh, and I froze another one. Yeah, okay, so maybe I am gonna do the, the lava strats here. <laughs> yeah, so normally Met for a Ridley just stands there and jumps up and down in one spot like a chump. Yeah, unfortunately I got trapped there. Like a chump, hey. <laughs> Alright, so that wasn't too bad, actually. <clears throat> it really helps to have the Varia and the Wave Beam and the Ice Beam for that fight. It's a lot more difficult, as you can probably imagine, when you don't have any of those. And it's an any key. Not really what we were wanting, but at the end of the day, it's not Replacing your, like, five keys already? You still had stockpiled? Right. Yep, so we've got one more check to make here. Let me just make sure we don't have any exits or connectors here. We don't. Just have the one entrance. <laughs> Question in chat, is it possible to kill the animals? Um, no, this game has no animals to kill, unfortunately. I don't have that kind of donation incentive, but we do have the incentive for the swordless task that has not yet been met. Which would be amazing. I honestly didn't even mean to make that jump, but since I did, we'll just go this way. This, uh, this route's in one extra minor item check here. Yeah, it's just a missile refill, so yeah. nothing to write home about. And unfortunately, that was a key there. Not really, not really what I was wanting. More money, also not really what I was wanting. It's a 3.5 second time loss, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And he, this room is the only room in Ridley's hideout that requires you to have more fall and more fall bombs to pass through it. Well, you say that, but the, the seams between two rooms in this can sometimes generate to require you to have uh, more fall bombs. Oh, true. Yep, that's true, actually. Because of the, the way that the room randomizer works, where it's uh, stitching together rooms taken from different pieces of the thing that still have the same uh, entries and exits. So if you if you can move left to right, then those rooms will be in the left to right pool. And sometimes the, in Ridley's Hideout in particular, they don't connect together in a um, straightforward way. It can generate situations where you need more fall or more fall bombs. Right. Yeah, unfortunately, Ridley's Hideout was kind of a bust there. Um... We're gonna see if we can't find level two here. Because we haven't found the level two for Zelda. Uh, pretty sure I checked that already. 
Okay, so level two. I want to say we haven't seen three either. Yeah, I haven't found level three either. That's correct. So level two and level three are going to be available um, probably through dungeons here. I'm going to go ahead and make this check real quick. And it's nothing. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we can get to level three. And we can't. So we're gonna go to Norfair. Oh boy. <laughs> My favorite. Um, yeah, we're gonna so there are a lot of really quick checks, especially from this entrance that I'm going to. So hopefully it won't be too bad. Um, it'd be nice to just have to do the attic. <laughs> but uh that's not normally how it goes, unfortunately. <laughs> No. All right, and we do have another entrance in the attic, so that's good. That could be level two or three right there. Probably is level two or three, to be honest. Yeah, not sure where else it would connect to, so it's got to be a Zelda dungeon. Or, yeah, no, it's, I'm pretty sure it has to be a Zelda dungeon at this point. Yeah, it'd be extremely unlikely that it wasn't. And I shouldn't have even gotten that money. I don't need money at this point. Speaking of money, would uh, now be a good time to read donations? Oh, definitely. We're just making our way through to the attic. This could be a problem. Ooh, a bit of a tricky one here. Yeah, you can't freeze those either, that's what I thought. I mean to unmorph. I think I had it there too. Shoot, yeah. Got it. Let's go. Uh, morph ball bomb jumping in this game is way more difficult than Super Metroid. <clears throat> it's a lot more inconsistent. Yeah, sometimes the seat can expect you to do some pretty, um, uh, nothing, nothing insane, but something a little bit different than you would usually do in vanilla, vanilla Metroid. Truth. Alright. Ooh, I took a hit there that I did not mean to. I've got to be careful. I think one hit is death here. Got a, a high roll on Norfair here, too? Yeah, it looks like it. Well, there's the last Triforce that I didn't need. I was really hoping for Totems there. Still took it anyway, huh? <laughs> well, I couldn't really stop my... That's a lot of times when you're just grabbing those items out of those uh, statues. You can't really stop yourself, unfortunately. And it's level 3. Um, I think I'm going to check this out for um, connections to level 2 as well. This also should be a normal. It's not. We still don't have any totems, right? That's correct. Gotta yeah, be there somewhere. Oh yeah, I'm sure they will be. <laughs> so we're going to check out the vanilla raft room first here. That's vanilla enemies in that raft room as well. Hey, speak of the devil. So that All right, now, the question is if that's enough or if we need to track down Kraid too. Right, that could be go mode for Metroid. Could be. But we don't know yet, so we're not going to go ahead and mark it yet. The worst case scenario is uh, the second totem is required and tucked behind Goma. And you're going to need to get the bow into level 6 to get that. True. 
or even find that, uh, oh, I guess you, you have the ladder, so you can go back to level 8 if you need to, uh, for that one equipment right, slot. Yeah, there's one item in 8, there's one possible accept, um, accessible item in 6, and then still 2 here, and 3 in level 2. attack being in the Lost Hills, which we already know. Trying to preserve my forced bombs here. Did not get it done, unfortunately. And it's just a key. Alright. But yes, we have no bananas. <laughs> So, we're gonna go ahead and check the rest of this three for exits. See if level two is contained somewhere in here. Oh, didn't even think of that. Oh god. Worst case scenario. Bow is in level two. Level two is inside level seven. Um, that one I don't think is going to be a thing because we already found a second entrance into level seven. Oh, okay. There is a second entrance to three, though. We just found that out because I could not bomb south there. And actually, I don't... Now that I say that, I believe I should just be exiting here. But since I'm already up here, I'm just going to check to make sure here. It's one of the things that can be tricky with this, is keeping track of the, all the entrances and knowing where they can still show up. Sometimes the uh, uh, levels or areas you haven't been to yet can be in some pretty uh, unexpected locations, so it's always good to keep a mental uh, track of what you found and what you haven't yet. Yeah, so there will be another entrance into level 3, and looks like it will either be on the overworld or in a dungeon. We don't... Kind of a relief it's not buried in Norfair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the good thing. There's another ring, I'll take it. Yep. Yes. Welcome back. Yeah, go for it. Right. Sounds like a good go ahead. We got a couple donations that came in. We've got a $80 donation from the last triangle that says, Nice job hunting my siblings. You've shown plenty of wisdom to navigate the seed, plenty of courage to brave the dangers of two worlds, and plenty of power. Toppling tons of baddies with a slap of wood. Let's share that wonderful bounty with some friends in need. Best of luck with the run. And we've got another $100 uh -oh, anonymous donation you. with no comment. Uh, thank you very I'm much. I'm sure my phone didn't die. <laughs> Do you happen to know uh, how close we are to the... Um, Donation incentive for the swordless task. Uh, Metal Zilla, are you guys still there? Hope we can get that in. Yeah, it'd be really. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing that. So it'd be nice if we could meet meet that goal. That, that, that sounds really interesting. Strelz, you're taking what 14 damage with various suit here. That's a uh, 28 vanilla or 28 without Varia. Oof.
Did we did we lose antlers? Sorry, that's eleven. Huh? Yeah, I haven't heard him in a bit, but I don't know if he's uh sudden. That's possible, looks like he might have had his audio drop. I was wrong a little bit before. It looks like it was um, 11 damage with various suits, so that's 22, which is still above Kraid's damage in Norfair, which is pretty rough. Yeah, that's correct. the power pre oh no I didn't even think about this being convoluted as hell there are some power breaks that block spots we one or two of them were open already all right and at least one was just, just one, one. I'm by my account yeah yeah the um green okay. forest uh power bracelet so spot. that could open up something we'll see he's gonna go try them out I'm assuming Yeah, that's the one that was already opened. <laughs> Aside from the, the boomerangs, um, I think we have most equipment now. Mm -hmm. Oh, did we never end up checking this? Shoot. Ah, ma uh, magic sword's still out there somewhere. Yeah. <clears throat> if he finds it, he'll pick it up, but he, he definitely doesn't need it. His skill level. Certainly not. Red ring and everything already at this point, and uh, we're looking at uh, 11 hearts right yeah, now. He's, he's got more than enough. <laughs> Still has a potion. Yeah. Uh, although Ganon is um, is going to be harder in this, and uh, when we when we get there, we'll see we'll see some of the changes that have been made. Although it's not going to give antlers any any problem, I don't think. I'm not even sure if we'll see too many of the changes yeah. if he's got it unlocked. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, we'll see. So we've got uh, three out of four, I believe, of those um, power bracelet checks down. Just looking for the graveyard. Beautiful screen wrap. <laughs> Single rupee. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, if, if, aside from, <laughs> shouldn't need to spend any more money on anything. Uh, all the equipments out of the shops. Uh, we, did, we checked level five's upgrade too, right? And that that was the layout ladder. Yeah. Um, was it level seven? Have we seen that yet? I don't remember, honestly. It's been a while since we've seen level 7, for sure. For those who might be wondering, um, Antlers has lost the ability to hear the commentary, so I think that's why he's quit commenting. On what he's doing because he doesn't want to talk over anybody that's what's going on there that makes sense so we're just in our uh, speed run yeah. racing uh, commentating mode yeah, so basically it's gonna be 
us. <laughs> it's a bit of a welcome reprieve where I'm not uh, commentating for four runners and tracking at the same That's time. That's true. We have, a, we have a weekly Thursday race, and sometimes we'll restream it. Usually, Zilla here is the uh, lucky person who gets to comment and track for all four runners. It's all me, yep. baby. <laughs> So we're back in level eight, getting those uh, that one last ladder check, the ladder block to check down in the bottom. Uh, so there's another <laughs> downside to the book is uh, having to wait for it to light up a room if you shoot the wand in the um, in a dark sure. room. I'm pretty sure Antlers never picks up the book if you can help it. But this time it was snuck right into his inventory from the start. <laughs> so what are, we, uh, what are we still looking for here? We're looking for Bow, and we may be looking for Crane Totem. Okay. Well, we're running out of places to find, so we'll probably find Bow pretty quickly here, hopefully. Still haven't found level two, which is going to have uh, three potential items in it. That's right. So it has a floor so drop. We might be looking the boss for item one of those and the items. Item. Yeah. Yep, we've seen. I think. I think we've. Uh, well, cleared Metroid at this point, unless um, he didn't finish Norfair while I was looking somewhere else. So it's got to be in Zelda, and I think we know all of Metroid's uh, connections at this point, so I think the rest of this game is going to be spent in Zelda unless um, we need to get into a dungeon somewhere. I remember, um, were we able to check all of uh, level six, or is it possible that we can sneak into the Triforce room behind Goma with the, the right entrance? Yeah, it depends. Uh, I don't think we've seen all of level six yet, so that's uh, it's definitely a possibility. I could be wrong, though. Right, ladder block we hadn't seen uh, past yet, because I think this was before. Yeah, so Goma's blocking it, um, but you never know, sometimes a seat might open up an entrance, like a bomb hole next to the Triforce room, or something like that. Yep. Um, so you can skirt around the boss in some cases. I'm not sure if Antlers has tried that yet. That's what it's looking like it might be here. <laughs> and that's nice. Bo. Let's go mode for Zelda. And in uh, more keeping with the uh, later Zelda tradition, you found the weapon that is used to defeat the boss <laughs> in the dungeon. That's right. How vanilla. Cool. Go mode. We know where nine is. We've got the full triangle. We can uh, slay Ganon. And if we're very lucky, we only needed one totem for Torian, and we're go mode full stop. We're the home stretch. Yep. Uh, this definitely should be a sub two hour seed. It's kind of funny that Gomo is trying to guard the item that would kill him, but to no avail. Yep. <laughs> Makes sense yeah. though, right? Like you want to keep your, your weakness close. You got to keep your it's eye true. on it. Your your single weak point eye. Makes me wonder why Ganon always have the silver arrows in level nine. I mean, yeah. I mean, he wasn't even guarding them. They were just kind of in there. So I don't know. <laughs> too much too much trust in uh, the whiz robes and Patra and all his lieutenants. I mean, I would have had that thing destroyed, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fair. I'm not sure why he's keeping it. This is looking to be. Oh, it's a jet. It's a huge jet. Unless this, uh, wow. unless this door isn't open um, in the north here. Fast nine. Yep, here we are. Oh, wow. oh what a fast nine. That was quick. Yeah. That was fast path. It's 
sometimes you can hear, you know, uh, just get lost for 10, 15, 20 minutes in here. So in here we do have additional fireballs coming from the statues. Um, Ganon himself has a randomized stun time, so it's harder to get a stun lock on him. In addition, you will heal energy slowly, so if you here. take a long time in between stabs, you any, could recover any, any of my a lot of his health, so you gotta kinda of stand on that. partners. So Oh, did that make it up in yeah, the 3.0? Yeah. Yeah. That's kinda Wonderful. what I'm dealing with. Oh and with and warping when he's vulnerable is another nice yep. little touch. Sometimes that can really troll you. That's single G. And single G for just need the one to make it in the metro. And because the Turian bridge is not shuffled in this flag set, he knows exactly where where it is, and he'll and I imagine okay. he's going to make a beeline directly there. I guess we will there. continue to dig Whoa, out oh. this level two. That's interesting. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, there's level two. Nice. Just yeah. while we're here, and you got we that can net. access it. Magic sword just in time. Make sure there's no totem here. A little <laughs> less of a beeline, I guess, because of uh, now we're in a completely new uh, unexplored territory. That's pretty funny. So he's probably going to take the time to dig out level two to find the other right, token in case well, he needs it. Doesn't matter. Makes sense. I'm kind of uh, curious. Wow, what I've never the, seen uh, it drop you off like that before. And there's there's the nice. crane totem. Hundred percent go mode. All right. Was, but... Now we'll never no, know if we needed one or two. Go it's fine. It. Mysteries will never be solved. <laughs> of course, we could ask the seed vetters if they uh, they somehow figured it out on their playthrough. Or boot up the sea to yourself. <laughs> yeah. So he's gonna make a beeline to Torian now. Um, we'll be able to see the uh, some of the enhancements that have been made. One in particular is always interesting to see if you've never seen it before. So. Uh, all right, we're honing in right on the end here. It's gonna be all Metroid from here on out. Uh, no more Zelda. Three energy tanks should be more than enough. And plenty of missiles also. Yeah. So we won't be uh, depending on the Metroid farm uh, to provide a good crop this yeah. year. <laughs> no, it's always nice to go in there fully loaded so you don't have to farm. That can definitely troll you. Oh, yeah. It's your, uh, it's your highest number of missiles you've spent uh, chasing a refill. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think it's uh, my highest has probably been 70 that I've uh, emptied into Metroids and not gotten a return on yeah, my investment. Yeah, that's rough. It's even worse when you run out and you have yeah. to leave. Yeah. At 70, I should have just taken the fight, honestly. But yeah, we got, got plenty of fun here. Let's see, uh, let's see how this all plays out. Vanilla shaft for the first uh, drop in Torian here. Yeah, it's surprising. Usually it randomizes a few of the other screens into that area. Yeah, here we've got. We've got some rather aggressive Metroids here. Not even wasting missiles on him. Plenty of resources. Yeah, here. with this many missiles, you just freeze and go. He's fully loaded on missiles and energy, so. So you might notice these Rinkas are behaving a little differently than vanilla Rinkas. Uh, every once in a while they will double back 
and rehome in on Samus. Which can make for quite the challenge, especially in Mother Brain's actual chamber. And you can see he uh, staggered the, the death. He um, did one missile into the one on the right, and then all of the rest of the missiles hit all three Metroids. That's a tactic to stagger their drops, because if the Metroids die on the same frame, they're guaranteed to have the same drop, and he's looking to make sure that he can get a variety between missiles and, um, and life to make sure that he's got that covered. We're giving him the business here. No missile drops so far, but 160 is still plenty yeah. to get through uh, Mother Brain. So it'll take 40 to get through the Zebatites. Um, this level, Mother Brain will take uh, 44, 45 missiles total to get uh, through the jar and to defeat Mother Brain if you do it perfectly. Plus the 40 for the Zebatites, so 85 total. So he's got more than enough. He's got almost, almost double the amount he needs. Nice quick morph ball to dodge the auto turret. Yeah. This is why he wanted long beam, so he could freeze the Rinkas from a distance. Otherwise, you gotta wait for them to get up pretty close, and that can get you in some pretty tight quarters, so... Yeah, you can't, can't count on uh, just dodging them once because they'll double back right. and uh, ruin your day. And here's the liver in a jar herself, Mother Brain. Yeah, so as long as he keeps those rinkers frozen, uh, you won't have any problem with this. Sometimes they control you pretty hard, though. For the, the double input, uh, Metroid has this tendency where if you press any other button while you're holding the fire button, it will uh, input another fire, uh, which can be used to um, attack very quickly, but also can cause some trouble when you're only intending to shoot once to um, freeze the Rinka. Yep. The old double tap. Well, he's getting bounced around a bit. That's not not a good situation. Is uh is Mother Brain healing as well? So Mother Brain doesn't heal. Um, she did in previous versions. We couldn't get into this version. It was just there were some technical hurdles. So, but she does have much higher HP than Vanilla. Let's see what the Torian platforms are arranged like today. Some fun little randomization here makes this a little more spicy, but in this case, it makes it nice and easy. Nice staircase here, three cycle. Yeah, so these platforms are randomized. Sometimes it can be pretty trolly, but sometimes it isn't. Just for some interest. And that's GG for antlers. Right. Time. Should have, should have uh, declared time uh, was declared coming time up was here coming a little, up bit, here but a little yeah, bit, but that's yeah, time. that's time. It's time. It's time. Hello again, everybody. Um, for some reason, everything on my phone just randomly got muted, so I could not hear everybody. For, I don't know if you guys could hear me, but um, but uh, but yeah, that was Z1M1. I'm probably getting a little bit of feedback now because I'm on my computer. Um, set on my phone for audio now, but uh, just wanted to drop back in and um, say thanks to Metal and to Zilla for all their help and support and everything you guys do for the community. And um, thanks to everybody for watching. Um, that was a pretty, that was a decent seed. We came in quite a bit underestimate, um, but. Uh, but yeah, thank thank you guys, and I appreciate yeah. you doing this for yeah. me. Yeah, no problem. Thanks yeah, for no problem. Thanks, thanks for running it. Thanks for running it. That was good. That was good seed. Yeah, and thanks thanks to Task Giving for hosting us, and thanks to all of the donations that came in. Thanks to our host uh, who was able to help 
read out those donations and get us all closer to that incentive and help out NAMI. Um, so thank you very much. Absolutely. It was uh, it was fun getting to show off Z1M1, and I know we kind of started late, so I will kind of uh, make way here if you guys don't have any other thoughts for, um, on anything. But uh, yeah, come check out Z1M1. Um, join the Discord um, if you're interested and you like it and you want to play it. Um, we're always looking for new uh, players, and there's not, you know, there's a, there's a decently active racing community. Um, at the moment, we're always trying to look for races, so but we always want more people in the community. Yeah, for sure. Oh, welcome. Uh, I've started. Um, I guess it's been over a year now, but uh, very welcoming community. It was great to just jump in and learn. And one of my favorite randomizers I've come across, honestly. Yeah, and all, all the people are really good people. They're they're uh, they're always willing to help um, get you get you started and and help you learn. Mm -hmm.